The purpose of this video is to give you a big picture of a tensor. In this video, firstly, I will tell you the reason why these are qualified to be called tensors. And secondly, I will tell you about why the idea of a tensor is necessary. Before moving to the first topic, let's see the difference between a matrix and a tensor briefly. To put it simply, a matrix is just a box that organizes numbers, while a tensor is one of linear functions. A vector is one of tensors, and a characteristic of a vector is that a vector itself will not change even if the coordinate system changes. I will talk about it a little. This is a vector, and the components are, let's say, 3 and 4. So we can describe the vector in this way, right? What will happen if I change the coordinate system like this? It is no doubt that the components will change, but the vector itself will not change at all. Let's see it again. The vector itself doesn't change at all, right? I mean, the length of the vector doesn't change. The direction of the vector doesn't change either. This is an important characteristic of a vector, and we must keep this in our mind if we think about tensors. Let me tell you about a vector again, because it's very important to distinguish a vector from something that is not a vector when you try to understand a tensor. A velocity is a vector, because even if Smith looks at the ball, or even if Johnson looks at the ball, the velocity will never change. The ball is going east if Smith looks at the ball, but the ball is going north if Johnson looks at the ball. This will never happen, right? And now, I will give you a question. What do you think is not a vector? This matrix expresses Miller's height and weight. His height is 174 centimeters and his weight is 62 kilograms. Can we say this matrix is a vector? If Smith looks at the matrix, he can describe the matrix in this way. It's easy, right? What if Johnson looks at the matrix? This is her coordinate system. Even if she looks at the matrix, the components are still 174 and 62. Therefore, the arrow will be this. You remember that when Smith looked at the matrix, the arrow was this. The arrow changes if the coordinate system changes. That's why we cannot say this is a vector. Okay, now I will move on to our main topic. Why are these qualified to be called tensors? I will start with an inertia tensor. What is an inertia tensor? Here is a material, and if it has this angular velocity, the angular momentum will be this. What caused this to happen? The inertia tensor caused this to happen. Okay? By the way, you already know that an angular velocity is a vector. The length or the direction will never change, even if the observer changes, right? An angular momentum is also a vector. 
the reason is the same as an angular velocity. Now, let me remind you once again, because it's important. Here is a vector, and if I change the coordinate system, its components will definitely change, but the length and the direction will not change. That is a vector, okay? So, what's the significance of an inertia tensor? That is, to produce a new vector using another vector. And this is the definition of a rank 2 tensor. Now, you may be thinking, so what? Actually, it's general if this kind of function doesn't produce a vector. I'm going to explain it in this video later, so please keep it in your mind. Let's move on to a stress tensor. What is a stress tensor? If you don't know about a stress tensor at all, please skip this topic for maybe one minute, okay? Here is a material, and these forces are applied. Let's say you would like to know the stress at this point on this surface. This surface is expressed by this vector. A stress tensor is useful, because if you compute this, you will be able to get this stress vector at this point on this surface. This is a stress tensor. Let's review what happened to this. These are vectors, right? Nobody can say that the direction of the surface will become different if the observer changes. Nobody can say that the direction or the strength of the stress vector will become different if the observer changes, right? These are vectors. That's why we can say that the significance of this is to produce a new vector using another vector. Are you getting familiar with the tensor? If not, please think about this question. What is not a tensor? I will give you an example. An engineering strain is not a tensor. Please don't be afraid if you don't understand this math expression at all. This expression itself is not our topic now. We will just think about matrix operation, okay? So, let's try multiplying this matrix by this vector. And let's say we get this arrow. Do you think this arrow is a vector? Actually, this is not a vector. I will give you the reason. Let's try changing the coordinate system. Will it be this? Actually, it will not. The blue arrow is defined as a vector, so the arrow itself will not change. But the yellow arrow will change. Please remember that a vector will not change, even if the coordinate system changes. Therefore, we cannot say the yellow arrow is a vector. By the way, it is natural that the yellow arrow changes if someone changes the coordinate system, because you computed this complicated math operation. You can agree, right? It is so natural that if you change the coordinate system, the yellow arrow will change. An inertia tensor or a stress tensor are unnatural. Yes, these are unnatural. Because even if you change the coordinate system, the computed yellow arrow will never change. That's why these are qualified to be called tensors.
generally speaking, like an engineering strain, if someone changes the coordinate system, the computed yellow arrow will change. I will give you a question. What if an inertia tensor was not a tensor, but a just matrix? What would happen? Let's try rotating this material with this angular velocity. You are kind enough to compute the angular momentum, and you tell me that this is the angular momentum. But I would have to ask you, in what coordinate system? As we are talking about the inertia matrix, every time when the coordinate system changes, the angular momentum changes. However, the relationship between an angular velocity and an angular momentum is a tensor. Even if the coordinate system changes, the angular momentum will never change. That's why an idea of a tensor is important and necessary. Now, you may have a question. How can we come to know whether the matrix is a tensor or not? Here is the answer. This A is coordinate transformation matrix, and if the components of this matrix changes in this way, this matrix is qualified to be a tensor. 